Rams general manager Les Snead explains the philosophy behind forget those picks. You are locked on Rams, your daily Los Angeles Rams podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Rams your first listen every single day, your team every single day, free and available, of course, wherever you get your podcasts. And don't forget to subscribe. Click that subscription button. Don't forget our Locked On Rams YouTube channel as well. That's a good place for you to get all your Rams information. If you're not in front of your phone, you got your laptop, we got you covered no matter which way it is. My name is Travis Rogers. Thanks for checking us out. You can follow me on Twitter at Travis Rogers. Of course, I host the uh, Rams pregame, halftime, and postgame show on their flagship station, 710 ESPN, and have since the Rams returned to Los Angeles back in 2016. And kind of brings us to our next thing. I do a daily show uh, from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m., the Travis and Sliwa show. And my co-host and myself, Alan Sliwa, we interviewed Les Snead on um, today, on March 2nd. We had a chance to talk to him today. Um, and I want to want to talk about some of the things that he said. And in particular, I want to start with the idea of F them picks, right? That's kind of been the, the, the line behind Les Snead. It's been it's funny. It's accurate. And I think that it is a, a very unique way of going about running an organization, a professional sports organization, especially an NFL team where, a team where draft picks are held in incredibly high regard. They are a very valuable currency, unless, of course, you are the Los Angeles Rams. And he came on, and the question was, you know, kind of take us through what, uh, what, what, what F them picks really means. What does it mean? To you, what you know, obviously, it, it's kind of something the funny that you know fans here and have grabbed onto and talk about and kind of you know, hey, we'll just go get the best players and go from there. But I want to read you the answer that he gave us when he came on uh, the Travis and Sliwa show earlier um, today, and he said was it's a satirical way of looking at it. F them picks would mean just giving them away. We just decided not to pick someone. We did use these picks intentionally, but what makes the model work is the boring part of it. Since 2017, we've had no first round picks, but we've had the second most uh, second and third rounders. We've had the fourth most day three picks and the fifth most picks in the league. 66% of our roster we drafted, which is the most in the league. 50, 55% we drafted in 2018 and 2019. What that allows us to do, we've got to be able to draft well, develop well, and have the courage to play or to rely on inexperienced players to uh, to fill roles and even start at times to complement some of the players you're talking about, like Aaron Donald, who basically closed the game for us. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about what that means. What he's saying is this isn't a F them picks in a situation where it's just, you know, we don't care about the draft. We're just not going to, we're never going to be involved in it. What it means is we're going to use our draft picks differently than everybody else. We're going to use our draft picks to go acquire proven commodities, our high draft picks, our first round draft picks, right? These are the things that other teams hold on to like they're their firstborn children, right? That this, I have to have this. This is my first, can't give away my first rounder. The Rams say, I would rather have Jalen Ramsey than first round picks. I would rather have Matthew Stafford than first round picks. I would rather have Vaughn Miller than second round picks. Give me guys that I know what they can bring to the table in an NFL setting, and I will figure it out from there. That's the that's the part that I think we've all kind of understood from the beginning that I don't need to pick in the first round. Jalen Ramsey is already a first round caliber player, and there's no there's not nearly as much risk involved. I don't need to worry about whether or not Matthew Stafford is going to develop into a great player. He already is a great player. I'll take him. You go take some chances in the first round and see what you get. And by the way, when you hit the way that it did, you're going to pick 32nd. Okay, great. The Lions are going to pick 32nd. Is that going to change the Lions organization? Probably not. Okay, so that's the obvious part. But what he said in the second part of that quote, I think is just as interesting because what he's saying is, well, maybe we're a little unlike the rest of the teams when we use our first round picks to go get proven commodities. What we're particularly good at is using second round picks, third round picks, later round picks to round out the rest of our roster. What he just said in that quote that I read you is 
what we've been willing to do is put inexperienced players in ro- in roles and put them out there and take the risks that come along with that and trust our drafting, trust our development, understand that our coaching staff can put these guys in positions where they're going to be successful. It doesn't have to be, well, he's a first rounder, put him out there. He'll be good because he's that good of an athlete because he's that good of a player. No, I can find a guy in the third round. I can find a guy in the fourth or fifth round and put him in a situation. So by the middle of the season, I can put him out there. Maybe he's a little inexperienced, but my system is going to take care of him. He's going to be good enough to let my great players be great players and go and do that. I'm going to I'm going to build my team around the draft. Like you said, 66% of their roster, two out of every three guys, is a guy that they drafted. You know, and, and, and a lot of those guys, over half of those guys, are guys that they drafted very, very recently. Not a lot of teams are willing to do that. They're not willing to say, okay, we're going to spend a ton of money here. We're going to spend a lot of draft capital there, but we're going to play later round picks and we're going to play them quickly. We're going to play them within a year or two. We might play them in their very first year and go out there and do that. That's the boring part of this that no one that he's talking about. It's, it's sexy to trade a couple of first round picks for Matthew Stafford. Everybody pays attention. Oh my gosh, that's an incredibly high, high price to pay. Will it pay off? That's the easy part to pay attention. Jalen Ramsey, two first round picks. Oh my goodness. You know, what's he going to be like with the Rams? Is he going to fit in? Is he going to be a good enough player? Is he going to be a, a difficult teammate to have around? Well, none of those things were true. And oh, by the way, how's Jacksonville done with those picks that they got for Jalen Ramsey, right? Travis Etienne is one of those. Okay. Is he tearing up the league? Do you rather have Jalen Ramsey or him? Right. I mean, these are what we're talking about, but that's the obvious part. The boring part is I'm going to find a guy in the second round. I'm going to find a guy in the third round, the fourth round. We talked about it on yesterday's pod where the Rams last year, they had eight picks, none of them in the first round. Tutu Atwell was their highest pick in the second round. He was probably the least successful of all the guys that they drafted, but their third round picks, their fifth round picks, a seventh round pick like Ben Skoranek, these are guys that are getting important snaps and important moments and playing very, very well. That's what Les Snead is talking about with F them picks. And it was funny because he came on and he was in a very good mood. And we'll get into some of the other things he said later on uh, in the podcast. But what he was talking about specifically with this, it's the first time I've really heard him kind of chew on the idea of this isn't just, eh, you know, for first, who needs a first round pick? I'm just going to go find all these guys who are going to win. It's no, I'm going to take a big risk and send out these first round picks for proven NFL commodities, but I have to hit later in the draft because if I don't draft a guy like, Robert Rochelle or Ben Skoranek or Ernest Jones or these guys that come in and start for me, Troy Reader, these guys that come in and start for me in the later rounds. If I don't go and find a John Johnson a few years ago who comes in and starts for me, if I don't hit a home run with Cooper Cup in the third round, then all of the the the, the sexiness of taking these first round picks and trying to flip them in another way doesn't work like that. It, it doesn't matter because I don't have enough guys. I can have five stars, but we all know football is that game that you can have five good players, but if your other guys aren't good enough to do anything, it doesn't matter. Every team in the league has some good players, maybe not as many as the Rams, but every team in the league has good players, but it's those guys that you round out your roster with that we don't talk about nearly enough when it comes to the Rams. Those guys that you can fill in in third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh round picks, those are the guys that allow you to do the F them picks philosophy. And that's the thing that I think the less need was talking about when he came on with us uh, the other day, when he came on with us on Wednesday afternoon and was talking about how, look, this is the boring part that nobody wants to talk about. It's the guys that come later that we're willing to be a little bit aggressive with. We're willing to take a chance with and put them into a situation, perhaps a little earlier than maybe some other teams might. And then we can close the game with Aaron Donald. We can close the game with Cooper Cup. We can close the game with Odo Beckham Jr. or Matthew Stafford or any of those other unbelievable star players that they have. That's when they can do that because the guys at the back end of the draft have held up their own bargain. Okay, so just how unprecedented was this strategy? Just how unlikely was it to hit the way that they did it this last offseason? Les Need has the answer to that one coming up next. But first, let's talk about bet online, right? Football season, what I love, what you love. It is over for this season, but just this season. I'll be back before you know it. But basketball, it's going on right now, both pro ball and college basketball as well. All the latest odds, the totals, the player performance props, all of that stuff and fun stuff like where the next coach is going to land as well. BetOnline.net is the number one spot for all your sports betting needs, and it remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. Bet Online, And it's not just basketball. BetOnline.net is your source for hockey, boxing, UFC, 
all the odds that you need on all the sports that you care about and want more information on. Head to the website today and use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet online where the game starts. We'd say thank you one more time for making Locked on Rams your first listen every single day. Make sure that you're following Locked on NFL, Locked on experts covering the biggest stories from around the NFL every Monday through Friday in less than 30 minutes. It also is free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Okay, so on to the next topic that we talked about with Les Snead on my radio show, 710 ESPN, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Pacific time. If you want to check that out, you can check it out on the ESPN app. We're there as well. But we had Les Snead on the show on Wednesday afternoon, and I asked him a question um, about how, how unprecedented was it for the team to make as many moves as they did, high-profile moves. And we're talking about Jalen Ramsey. We're talking about, obviously, Matthew Stafford and Odell Beckham Jr. and uh, Vaughn Miller, right? These are guys that they went and spent a ton of capital to acquire or took a big risk to bring them in, in the case of Odell Beckham, because of you know the Odell Beckham reputation that preceded him unfairly, as it turns out. Um, but I asked him the question, you know, have you ever seen any team make as many bold moves as your team did and have all of them hit the way they did where every person that you thought was going to have to fill a specific role ended up filling the exact specific role that you thought they were going to have to do in the first place. And his answer, I, I think, is really interesting. He said, that's a great question. You'd like, to, uh, you'd like to pound your chest. There was intentionality behind what we did. We did give up quality capital to get Matthew Stafford. We did give up quality capital to get Jalen Ramsey. With Odell, we took advantage of an opportunity that was there. We gave up solid capital to get Vaughn Miller. There were reasons we did it, but you're right. The math would say at least one of these players or might or might not live up to their uh, exceeded expectation. Or let me, let me say that again. The math would say at least one of these players would or might not live up to or exceed expectations, but those particular players you're talking about, those in the big moments in December and January, and we got to the final eight, it did seem all the players, as Sean likes to say, played their best when their best was required. The credit goes to these individuals because they had to perform on the grass in very stressful, chaotic moments, and they did. Okay, so that's Les Snead um, talking on the Travis and Sliwa show on um, March 2nd. So, I think that's really interesting what he's talking about because it really is. They, they, they spent, like we just talked about with the, the pick situation, they went huge, huge, right? They went and spent a ton of draft capital to get Jalen Ramsey. They spent even more to go get Matthew Stafford. They spent more to go get Vaughn Miller. They took a chance on Odo Beckham. Odo Beckham was, was released by the Browns. He was available to anybody who had the, the space and the want to go get him. And the Rams made it happen for him. The Rams brought him in and gave him an opportunity to kind of rewrite his own story. And he did it very successfully. But really, and, and, and let's talk about some other guys too. Aaron Donald, they gave a ton of money to it. Well earned, of course, but they spent a lot of money on Aaron Donald to go do what they did with him. Cooper Cup, of course, is their they're golden boy. He's the guy that was, you know, they knew that as long as we have this guy, we can do we can do some things some other places that's going to free some stuff up. Without exception, every single one of the guys that they went out and got contributed. And not just like, oh, they made a play here or there. They were integral to the success of the team during a Super Bowl run. The Rams do not get out of the second round of the playoffs without Matthew Stafford. They don't get out of the third round of the playoffs without Matthew Stafford. And they sure don't win the Super Bowl without Matthew Stafford. They don't win the game against the 49ers without Aaron Donald. They don't win the game against the Cincinnati Bengals without Aaron Donald. They don't win either of those games without Vaughn Miller doing what he's doing. They probably stall at some point along the line if Odell Beckham doesn't perform the way that he did. He could not have been any better. From the moment he got there until the moment he got hurt late in the second quarter in the Super Bowl, Odell was not only a fantastic player, he was a model teammate. Everything that you heard about him – simply just did not happen here in LA. He was terrific. All of those guys that I've mentioned hit and hit at exactly the right time. Cooper Cup, Super Bowl MVP, enough said right there, right? This is not how things go. Look, if you make the thing, think about you, think about when you go and, and even when you're like, you're playing cards or whatever, and you get hot and you're winning a bunch of bets and everything, or, or betting is another good example. I'm on a hot streak. 
you don't go 10 for 10, you go seven for 10. You could maybe if you're insane, you go eight for 10, right? If you're, you're playing golf, you make a bunch of 10 footers. You don't make them all. You make some of them. They didn't miss. And that's what he's saying. And that's why he's saying it's such a credit to those players, because while we did spend a lot of, as he says, um, capital to get these guys, they performed. And it's an extraordinary compliment to those guys uh, in and of themselves. Because if any one of them doesn't live up to the billing or the expectations or comes up just a little bit short, let's say that Vaughn Miller comes in and instead of being Vaughn Miller, Super Bowl MVP style Vaughn Miller, just kind of a guy, just kind of a guy that's out there, maybe makes a play once in a while. Maybe you think, you know, yeah, they're Vaughn, he's kind of rough play. Vaughn Miller was all over the field. Jalen Ramsey is all over the field. Matthew Stafford's making throws that you're just simply not going to see very many guys in this league make. If any of them come up a little bit short, what are we talking about? We're talking about you spent all of this and it didn't cash in. It's not supposed to go like that. I think he, I think that's what he's saying. I think that's what Leslie was getting at when he came on our show, which was, Hey, listen, yeah, it's a good question because it doesn't go like that and give the, all the credit. And the, there's a ton of pressure on us for doing it, but give all the pressure in the world to those guys for performing in an incredibly difficult situation because usually when you make that many moves, you're going to have a guy or two that doesn't quite live up to expectations. And almost without exception, the Rams players that had big expectations delivered exactly to or beyond the expectations that they had coming in. And that just simply does not happen like that very often. So congratulations to those guys. Congratulations to Les Snead. Congratulations to Sean McVay for getting the very best out of him. That's how you go win a Super Bowl, that everything kind of breaks your way. Okay, so we had a nice long conversation with Les Snead. Coming up next, how do you build a winner that's not a one-hit wonder? How do you run it back again and again and again? That's coming up next. Okay, so run it back run it back right that was the the chant during the parade when the rams were at the coliseum they won the super bowl the confetti's flying through the air everybody's had a bunch of champagne and tequila and beer and whatever else it is and everybody's incredibly excited because the rams had just won a super bowl and it starts to fade and it starts to wear off and it starts to go to the point where okay well what's going to happen next and who's in charge of that Les Snead is in charge of that. Les Snead and Sean McVay, of course, are in charge of making sure that this just isn't a, hey, that was a great Super Bowl championship, and now you're going to go do you know, what so many other teams do. You go another 10 years without being even halfway decent or, or getting back deep into the playoffs. Certainly, the Rams have proven that they can build a sustainable winner under Sean McVay. Five seasons in L.A., five winning records, three division championships, two conference championships, and one world championship in five years. It's an extraordinary run. So how exactly do you go about doing that? I had Les Snead um, on our radio show, the Travis and Sliwa show on ESPN 710 in LA. He came on with us on March 2nd. And I asked him, you know, how, or I should say Alan actually asked him a question. My co-host said, how do you build something that's sustainable over and over again? And here was Les Snead's answer. And he, what he said was, you need to be aware of where your window is, wh what window you're in. Are you building on it or is it time to maybe do a rebuild or something like that? And I think we're in contention in the contention window. And a lot of it is our own players, the players that you've mentioned. They're in their prime. Our head coach is in his prime. They're the moment where you say, let's go make the most of it. And that's what you've got to keep simple. We have that base rate. That base rate is we have a lot of good players who have shown that they can call or that they can collaborate together and do things as a team together and do special things together and win a lot of games together. And now that you have that base rate, it's up to us to tweak the model here and there and to try and add again and gain edges. There's always going to be that in sports where you're going to have to retool. You have to be aware of that. Okay, so let's kind of simplify this. I, I think what he's getting at, and I think why this is so incredibly exciting for Rams fans moving forward, hearing Les Seen saying that, is it, it's pretty simple when you kind of just strip it down to the, the nuts and bolts of it all. What he's saying is the way you build a sustainable winner is when you realize you have an opportunity, you have to go. You have to go. You can't kind of nibble at the margin. You can't hope to catch a break here or there, or maybe something breaks your way just because it does. You have to try to gain that edge, to gain some advantages along the way. What he's saying is, I have one of the best coaches in the NFL. 
I have the single best defensive player in the NFL in Aaron Donald. I have an extraordinary quarterback who is playing at an extraordinary level. I have the best wide receiver in football. That is enough where I have to do whatever I can to fill in on the rest of the roster however I need to do it because we need to make it happen. As as much as I don't like saying this out loud, it's true. At some point, Aaron Donald is not going to be the best defense player in football. Not not anytime soon, I don't think, but it's going to happen. At some point, Matthew Stafford may not quite be as good as we saw last season. Cooper Cup will start to fade at some point. It, it's at sports, right? We get there, there's a reason that um, you know Isaac Bruce isn't playing for the Rams. It, the guys age out. Marshall Falk's gone. It, it just it, guys come, guys go. But when you get them, that's when you have to realize, okay, it's time to hit the accelerator. It's time to really go make sure that we get what we need to support these things because these pieces don't come around very often. And then simultaneously realize when it isn't there, you got to kickstart it. You got to make sure you, you got to go and find that next guy. And I'm not saying that finding the next Aaron Donald is easy. It, it, it's not, or everybody would go do it. But when you do find him, you can't wait around and hope the other pieces start to fall into place just organically. You have to force the issue a little bit. I think that's very exciting for the Rams. I think that when he talks about sustainability, when he talks about what he has, and part of the sustainability of it is too is, and and this is, I, I don't have the quote in front of me, but he was talking about just playing in LA, that that is a huge advantage because it's Los Angeles. He talked about growing up in Alabama um, and seeing the Rose Bowl on New Year's Day and what an impact that has. And that people who are not from this part of the country, like like I am, you know, born and raised in LA and have been here for the vast majority of my life, you just kind of, oh yeah, this is how the world works. This is this is what it's like. It's 80 degrees on January 1st. When the Super Bowl is in the second week of February in Los Angeles, yeah, it's 83. It's beautiful. What? what? What's the big deal? Um, it's not like that other places. And when you come from another place and you have an opportunity to go live in a city like this and play for a team like that, and you have the coach in place and you have the general manager in place and you play in a state of the art building and the owner is proven that he's willing to spend money. All of these things together lead to sustainability because, well, maybe you're not going to draft the next Aaron Donald. Maybe you can talk that person into a trade. Maybe you can get that guy in free agency. When he does become available, you can go get him. Or maybe he's already thinking about, you know, where I'd like to go at some point. You know, it looks like a really good ride. The Rams. I wouldn't mind being a part of what they're doing right now because it seems like every time I look up, those guys are in the playoffs. Every time I look up, the players that are playing for Sean McVay look like they enjoy the experience. The guy, the coaches that he has, all those guys are going on to become head coaches in other places. The, that stadium, the owner, all of these things. They're on TV. By the way, you know what the Rams are going to be? They're going to be on national TV over and over and over again. Kirk Morrison, who was on this pod uh, earlier this week, somebody that I've done the Rams pre and post with for the last six years. He talks about it all the time. Playing in prime time is a big deal. If you play on Sunday nights and Monday nights a bunch, that's a big deal of an, as an NFL player. It's the, it's the time where the rest of the league is watching you play. You play on Saturdays, or excuse me, on Sundays at 10 a.m., there's 10 games. You play on Saturday or Sundays at 1 p.m., there's five games. You're competing against a bunch of other, you're, you're getting your fans. You're not getting the, the, the football fans. Sunday night, all eyes on you. Monday night, all eyes on you. And the Rams are going to get a truckload of, of those games moving forward. They had a truckload last year because they were good last year because they play in that building because it's Los Angeles, because it looks good on TV. All of these things combined with, Hey, we realize that we've got really good players. Let's not hope that, Hey, you know, maybe Van Jefferson will get going. No, 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 no. We're not going to wait around. Go get Odell. Hey, you know what? I think, I think that maybe Troy Hill is going to turn into a really good defensive back. Nah, forget it. Go, uh, go, go get Jalen Ramsey. Force the issue. Make it happen. Don't wait around. When you have an opportunity to go get it done, to push that thing across the finish line, go take a shot and do it. And the other part of that is kind of interesting too. He said, you know, when it's not there, when it is time, you have to be aware that you're not in that window, that maybe that's the time to, you know, kind of pull back a little bit. We'll see if they do that when the time comes. We'll see as these players start to age, whether or not that's the philosophy they take moving forward. It'll be interesting to see. It's a great conversation with Les Need. Thanks for checking us out here on Locked on Rams. Don't forget, for your second listen, it is Locked on NFL Draft. Ryan Tracy and former NFL quarterback Eric Crocker bring the NFL to draft, or I should say bring the NFL draft to life every day with insight and analysis on college football prospects and NFL front offices, just like Locked on Rams. It, too, is free and available wherever you get your podcasts. 
All right, good conversation with Leslie. Tomorrow, I want to talk to Kirk again and talk about where they might start to target some of their draft picks in those middle to late rounds. That's coming up on the next edition of Locked on Rams. Until then, whose house? It's a Locked on Rams house.